Hi. In this module, we're going to talk about a couple of concepts that are in Chapter 7 in the McConnell textbook. We're going to talk about the different types of unemployment and the different types of inflation. Now, before we get to my list here about the different kinds of unemployment, look down here just for a few minutes. We're going to um, talk about this idea of the labor force first. The big circle I've got drawn here represents the population. It could be the United States, it could be Great Britain, it could be Mexico, whatever. The population at, at one level is really divided into two different groups of people. One are those folks that are out of the labor force. The other, those folks that are in the labor force. Out of the labor force, well, some, some folks that are out of the labor force are going to be kind of obvious. Um, a retired person like your grandfather or your mom who's in their 70s. Um, a little kid who's you know, your next door neighbor who's in kindergarten. Those folks are clearly out of the labor force. But some people choose to be out of the labor force. Generally, if you're 16 or older, you're either working or you're actively seeking work, you're in the labor force. If you're not actively seeking work, even if you're 30 or 50 or 16, you're out of the labor force. So some people will move periodically through their lifetime out of the labor force into the labor force and back. For example, I have a neighbor who's in her 30s. She's got two little kids. She and her husband have currently decided that while the kids are small, right until they go both into kindergarten, she's not going to work. So she's out of the labor force. She's in this group of the population. Once the kids are in school, she'll start looking for a job and she'll move from this part of the population to this. So that's one thing to consider here. We're talking about the labor force when we're talking about the kinds of people who are unemployed. Now looking up at my list here, we've got four types. Frictional, structural, seasonal, and cyclical. We're going to talk about them one by one. Frictional unemployment is the first kind. That happens when a person who's been out of the labor force, maybe somebody who's not been working because they've been in college for four years, decides to start looking for a job. They move from here to there. And for a while, before they find that first job, they're going to be, be unemployed. We say that a person like that is frictionally unemployed. Likewise, a person who might move from Virginia to California. The period of time that they're looking for a job, they've moved from one part of the geographic labor force to another, that period of time where they're looking, they're frictionally unemployed. So that's one kind. The second kind is structural unemployment. That occurs when a person has a particular set of skills and attributes that they used to be able to rent out in the marketplace. What that person knew how to do, their intellectual human capital, they used to be able to rent and, and find a job doing that work, can't anymore. A classic example from the last decade are typewriter repair people. Probably been a long time since you've used a typewriter. I think here at the college there might be still three or four around for the odd form that you can't do in a word processor. But typewriters have pretty much gone out of style. They're antiquated technology. We use computers and word processors. And so we don't use typewriters. We don't need typewriter repair people. The skills that the typewriter repair people have are no longer needed in the marketplace. So those folks are structurally unemployed. To get a job, they're going to need to be retrained. They're going to need to acquire some kind of new skill, some kind of new capability. Okay, seasonal unemployment is next. That one's pretty easy to understand because it sounds sort of like what it is. That's a person who's got a job that has a seasonal component. Um, a ski instructor is seasonally unemployed in the summertime. A diving instructor or a lifeguard might be seasonally unemployed in January. The last kind here is cyclical unemployment. And that's the kind of unemployment that it occurs when there's not enough demand for the product. Let me give you an example. Right after 911, there's a company in the center part of the country, I think it was in Nebraska maybe or in Kansas, that made plastic spoons and forks. And they packaged them up with napkins and little teeny tiny bits of salt and pepper um, envelopes. This company, right after 911, laid off about two-thirds of its workers for the first month and then a few more workers after that. Those folks were cyclically unemployed because there wasn't a demand for the product that that company produced. Well, there wasn't because a lot of folks were afraid to fly after 911 and it took a couple to three months before the airline industry got back up to normal. Their skills weren't outdated. It wasn't a seasonal issue. They hadn't moved. It wasn't a frictional issue. It was just that temporarily the demand for the product that they produce 
disappeared. And so their job did for a while too. As soon as the airline industry got back on its feet, as we moved into October and November, and then December and January, those people got their jobs back and that kind of cyclical unemployment disappeared. So that's cyclical unemployment. Frictional, structural, seasonal, and cyclical. Okay? Now let's talk about the two kinds of inflation. A little easier in a sense, cost push and demand pull. Cost push inflation comes from the supply side. Cost push inflation comes when the cost of inputs, the cost of producing something goes up. And let me use this one right over here to show you what that's like. If I start off here with this price level being um, the equilibrium price level and this country experiences cost push inflation, prices get pushed up because of a leftward shift in the supply curve. A good historical example of that is the OPEC oil embargo price increases of the 1970s. That shift of the supply curve causes an increase in prices across the whole country. So if the inflation, the price increase is coming from the supply side, it's called cost push inflation. By contrast, if it comes from the demand side of the economy, if there's an increase in consumption demand, investment demand, government spending, demand from the government, or net exports, the international demand, the demand curve shifts to the right. Prices go up here also, but that inflation is coming from the demand side of the economy. We call that demand pull. You might think about it either as the supply curve pushing up prices or the demand curve pulling up prices. Both of them cause inflation. So you could have inflation from either the cost side of the economy, the supply side, or the demand side, or both at the same time. Nothing in our, our little discussion here keeps this curve and this curve from shifting simultaneously. Okay? So that's the types of inflation, cost push and demand pull, and the types of unemployment, frictional, structural, seasonal, and cyclical. Chapter 7 in McConnell.